cleanup continues under a yellow flag condition now after the 83 of Micah Frano was upside down then right side up then upside down six and a half times tumbling out of turn number four and then he was able to climb out of that race car take another look start shredding parts which is good that's shredding energy dissipating energy some big hits as you mentioned Phil it's not the it's not the upside down it's when you come back down that you feel they're still working to get that race car and as many of the parts as they can onto the flatbed so they can take it back to the garage and and I know it's it's trivial to talk about but how difficult will that be to get into the hauler oh I think you probably just go ahead and tell that guy with the rollback I'll pay you to yeah, drive it take, home take it to Illinois where I'm from <laughs> Because that's, I mean, you they'll never roll. It will not roll. No, no. A lot of people will bring little casters that slip in the end of the frame rail uh -huh. for situations like that. But here's another look at it. See, they just get a little bit, they're side by side in front of them. Look like they may have lost a little momentum. They came up on that group right there, and Zach Ralston made just a little bit of contact with the back of them, but just enough to turn his car to the outside. And then the left front tire dug in when he was about, about 90 degrees on the racetrack towards the outside wall. Now, while all of this was going on, we've stayed under a yellow flags situation. We only have 13 laps of racing to go in this one. Ray Dunlap has been listening in to Brandon McReynolds' radio. Ray, what have they been talking about down there? Well, Rick, as we have documented, Brandon has some, come so close to winning one of these super speedway races, and they feel like they've got the best car in the field today. So how do you get from third to the front? Well, one option is for them to work with the 16 of Matt Lofton, and what they have to do there is Lofton's going to have to drag his brake so that Brandon can come up and become a two-car tandem and do the push. The other option is get some help from the rear, which would be from Sean Core. So they have been back and forth through the spotter stand on the radio talking to everybody, but now the concern starts to become you're losing laps and less opportunities to try it. But right now, I think the combination is going to be uh, the 32 going with the 16, and they're going to try to do a slingshot move to get around Hockenbra. Justin, you've been in this situation before. Obviously, the two car tandem is a little newer, a couple years old. If you were sitting right there in third with Brandon McReynolds' situation, what would you be thinking right now? Well, just knowing the 32 card and knowing that it's got a Hendrick engine in it, uh, same as what we run on the Nationwide Series, he's obviously got a lot of power. They got a really, really good race car. Seems like the 16's been really strong all day as well. So, in my opinion, you push the guy in front of you because you know you've got the power to push him. Um, you know, uh, the other thing that I like is there's two Chevrolets right there. If you go back, you're going to be with a Ford. Not that not that one push is better than the other, but you're at least going to have uh, you know a manufacturer that's going to be the same. And uh, you know I think I think when you're pushing that guy, y the restart's going to be critical. They're going to have to stay right there. Um, and then once if they can if they can get the run, obviously if you're the second guy in line, you got to make sure you can get clear of him too before the leader jumps down in front of you. So. Um, it's a tough decision, but I, I think my, my personal opinion, I'm going to push. Stay with your manufacturer. Well, and, and it's it's a lot harder to get wrecked if you're the pusher. So if it doesn't work, it doesn't look so bad if, if, if you're the guy pushing. But no, I, I think it's I think it's definitely, uh, it'll be interesting. Chad Hawkenbach continues to lead here. Let's see if we can make some contact with him. There's a screw chief. Hey, Chad, Phil Parsons up in a speed booth. You got a copy? Hey, Phil. Man, you're in a great position here. You're going to have probably somewhere around 10 laps to go when you guys get ready to start this race. Do you have a plan for this end of this race? Are you going to work with a guy behind you, or what's your, what's your situation? Well, I don't know that we have any friends out here right now. You know, being at the point is a little tough, but the only plan is to hopefully keep those guys behind me block as much as I can and, you know, get a good run for these guys that came on board with kind of high and, uh, See if we can get some more sponsors opening the eyes up here. It looked like you've done a great job since you inherited the lead after that great pit work by keeping that those left side tires on that yellow line. If they're going to pass you, they're going to have to do it on the outside, aren't they? Definitely have to try it on the outside. So far, I don't think that's worked for anyone. So depending on how many go with them, you know, it depends on where we go. But right now, the plan is just paint that way, paint that yellow line. All right, buddy, get a good restart now. That's the critical part here. Good luck. Well, thank you, Bill. Jim Trado.
The tandem in seventh and eighth right now both have the same last name, but Frank Kimmel left his family team to move over to Thor Sport. The team that now is what is Kimmel Racing is his nephew, Will Kimmel, in that red and black number 68 ahead of Frank. Frank just radioed in in that number 44 Ansel Menards Toyota. He said, my car is only good as a pusher, but we'll let Will know he'll push him when the time comes. So look for Frank Kimmel to push his nephew for his old team to a good finish here at Talladega. Will finish third at Daytona with some good strategy. Frank wants a good finish here. He's desperate for a win, but indeed, a good run and a good gesture here, knowing that he's got a car ahead of him that can run to the front. We're at the bottom of the hour with 10 laps of racing to go. Those of you tuning in for trackside, it will be coming up next. The Kimmels, Will Kimmel and Frank Kimmel might work together to see if a Kimmel could get to victory lane today, whether it be Will Kimmel in that kilt to tilt number 68 or Frank Kimmel getting his 75th career win in the ARCA Racing Series. I'll tell you something, too, is, is obviously Frank doesn't drive for his family team anymore, but I think he'd be happy to push Will to the front. And, and if Will won the race and he wasn't able to get by, I think he'd still be really happy about that. But obviously he's going to go for that win. But you got two really strong race cars back there that I think have a viable shot. If they can hook up together, can make it to the front. Didn't Chad sound lonely? He Chad did sound lonely. He doesn't think he has any friends out on the racetrack. Well, it's go time for the 58 of Chad Hawkenbra. He leads the field coming through the tri -oval. With just 10 laps of racing to go, green flag goes back in the air. We're back underway. Remember, the restart is the most vulnerable time for anybody up here up front. I'm right to the bottom of the racetrack, they go. I'm afraid the 58 got a little too good of a jump, but I don't think the guys behind him had anywhere to go to, to be able to use it. See, Matt Lofton's going to pull right in behind him. And now I think Matt may be afraid to pull to the outside because obviously Chad's going to make him go around the outside because if he gets hung out out there, then he could lose a lot of positions. Yeah, he could go from first to about 15th real easy. So he's not going to want to try and do that too early. You guys talked about where the eyes are, especially in this situation with Chad Hawkenbra. He is looking in the mirror. He wants to know exactly where Matt Lofton is in that 16. He does not want him to try to make a move to the inside, which he's not going to give him with the yellow line down there. And if he moves to the outside, he's going to want to make that car as wide as possible. And remember, we talk about the yellow line all the time. You cannot improve your position by going below the yellow line. You can dip below the yellow line. We've seen a lot of guys do it to pull off their engines or whatever, but you cannot improve your position by going below the yellow line. Nine laps of racing remaining at Talladega. One of the things that's going to have to happen here to be able to make this run, they're going to have to get some separation in between. We're going to have a gap. We're going to yeah. have to have a little gap. If, if there's less than a, about a car and a half in between you, you're not really going to ever get that run that you're going to need to push out and around. So uh, if Matt or, or Brandon or any of those guys up front are going to want to get that run, they're going to have to separate off. And, and usually the spotter's going to see that. And he's going to say, hey, they're trying to get away a run. From they're you. trying to get a run and, on and, you. And, and you're going to have to watch that. We saw the 68 of Will Kimmel and that tilt to kill number 68 have a gap between he and the car just in front of him, which was Steve Blackburn in the 94. Chad Hawkenbra's father watching as he goes across the stripe now with just eight laps of racing to go. A nervous dad right there. Well, another nervous dad is on the pit box for Will Kimmel. Or for, yeah, excuse me. <laughs> For, true. For Will Kimball is Bill Kimball, his father. So a nervous father crew chiefing for his son behind the wheel of that number 68. And we have Larry McReynolds, Larry Max on Brandon McWhen McReynolds, his son's pit box. Yep. Not a crew chief. He always he claims that in this situation he is just a father, but he's got that radio on and his son right now running in the third spot. We've got three Chevrolets up top. Hockenbra, Lofton, and McReynolds. Then it's Sean Corr, Tom Hessert running fifth, Steve Blackburn, Will Kimmel, Frank Kimmel, Brandon Davis, and Kevin Swindell, your top 10. And the hood flies off the 11. We have seen issues with the 11 all day. That is debris on the racetrack, and the caution comes out again. And they're going to have to do it all over again. It's going to have to be another restart that everyone's going to have to get up through the gears, not miss any gears, get back down to the bottom. Brett Hudson has not had a good day, and right here, you're going to see the hood fly off of that car. I've not seen one come off like that in a long time. Wow. I mean, it, we have all the safety tethers and do all right. of that, but at the speeds he's going and the amount of force that that had, that's uh, it's pretty amazing. 
And Ryan Reed said, what was that? <laughs> wow. So the hood flies off. We saw an engine almost com completely out of a race car. Larry's reaction to the caution coming out. No, we didn't need that. Running third. It'll be six laps to go when they come back by. Again, that's the debris that's on the racetrack, and that is a hood. That is a hood. Yeah. It's going to take a, you know, take a couple laps to get out there to get the hood. As you see, Brett Hudson continues to circle around the racetrack, but we're running out of laps right. now. There's going to be less laps for, for someone to practice making a move and then to make the move. You know, one of the things that I think, especially for a restart here, if you time it right, they can make some, some good moves. And we'll see if someone figures out what that timing is to get to victory lane at Talladega. Stay with us. <laughs> 